Sexual ethics. Sexual ethics. They raise questions around cohabitation and consensual sexual intercourse between people who aren't married to one another. Related to divorce, adultery and remarriage. Catholic Church believes marriage is indissoluble, so sex post-divorce is adultery and fornication. Premarital sex. Sex before marriage. It can happen on a casual basis, premarital sex and cohabitation has increased in numbers. 1960s, 1 in 20 UK couples cohabited, usually a short period of time before marriage. The spread of the pill increased these numbers. Now, cohabitation can happen long term instead of marriage. Historical findings. Anglo Saxon England, spouses pledged themselves to one another in a betrothal ceremony and after, they had sex before marriage but intended to get married. 18th century, half of the brides were pregnant at their wedding, but some could be abandoned. It was important for females to be virgins, so the British aristocracy could pass their wealth on to their own and know their heirs after they died. Christian teachings view sex before slash outside of marriage as a sin. Mainstream Christians understand it as a significance for the bond between a husband and wife. Sexual intercourse under any circumstance is wrong. Premarital sex equals lack of moral discipline and poses a threat to marriage and family. Cohabitation is seen less stable than a marriage. Biblical references supporting sex as a bond of marriage. Genesis, cleave equals become one flesh, marriage is the form of becoming one flesh. That is why a man, is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Showing the emotional and spiritual purpose of marriage, it is part of God's plan. Pope Paul VI, husband and wife become in a way one heart and one soul. Catholic Church, Premarital sex is a free union meaning couples have gone against God to give juridical and public form to a liaison involving sexual intimacy, exhibits an inability to make a long-term commitment and is an offense to marriage, human love does not tolerate trial marriages. Catholic Church's view on premarital sex. Catholic Church, premarital sex does not express fidelity loyalty, exclusivity, commitment and consequently, it doesn't permit sex before marriage, it is a sin. Those who engaged in premarital sex are excluded from sacramental communion until they've reconciled with a morally correct way of living. Betrothal. Catholic Church, sacrament of marriage is conferred by the couple with each other, not the priest or attending public but should a commitment be made by betrothal. Betrothal has a strong expectation of commitment, unlike casual cohabitation because you have to get married at the end of it. Church of England's view on premarital sex. Some Christian leaders have seen premarital sex as a step towards marriage rather than rejecting marriage. Something to celebrate, valuing families in church and society. 1995, dash cohabitation is a step along the way towards that fuller complete commitment but this view was opposed by more conservative Church of England Christians in general synod. Thatcher. Adrian Thatcher, Christians who believe all pre-ceremonial sex is immoral have wrongly assumed that the ceremony is a requirement of marriage he suggests there is a long tradition that locates the key point of commitment between two people as betrothal, not a ceremony. Western countries view. Social attitudes and laws do not follow the church's moral teachings in UK. X. Civil marriages outnumber religious marriages in UK. Two approaches Christianity take, one. Rejects the new social norms and keeps the traditional sexual rules and tells followers to as well. Two. Sees premarital sex as a way towards marriage.
Extramarital sex. Definition, married person having sex with someone other than their spouse, when a single person has sex with a married person. Sex is associated only with married relationships in Christian thought, it is a form of a bond. Catholic Church's view on extramarital sex. Catholic Church, a valid marriage can't be dissolved slash slash it forbids divorce between two Christians in a marriage that's been consummated meaning sex has finalized the marriage. Those who have been divorced and remarried are excluded from communion. In the Vatican II Council there has been in an increase in annulments, a true marriage was never present in the beginning. Divorce. Protestant churches permit divorce in certain circumstances after the Reformation in the 16th century. Catholic Church, anyone remarrying after a divorce is having extramarital sex with their new spouse. Church of England, more divided on the issue but forbids divorce. How the ruling on marriage and sex came about, religious. Marriage existed before Judaism and Christianity, but the Christian Church began the process of claiming jurisdiction over marriage. The New Testament, contains teachings that warn Christians away from adultery but allow remarriage after a spouse has been adulterous. 10th century, Church assumed more power over law of marriage, so Christians had to receive their blessing when they were married. Catholic Church, viewed marriage as a sacrament. Protestant thinkers, a holy kind of relationship. Lisa Cahill. Christianity's stance against divorce came because of men abandoning women often, it was to limit men's ability to manipulate marriage and women for power and money. Medieval tribes, marriage was done in three ways. 1. Capture. 2. Purchase. 3. Consent. Wealthy men had concubines, low status women who they kept as mistresses, and their wives, this was common. Only women could be accused of adultery, divorce was a male privilege. Church's ban on adultery made it impossible for men to have concubines and the ban on divorce stopped abandonment of women. Christianization of marriage made marriage fairer, especially for women, so extramarital sex has fewer negative outcomes for women and children. Secularization. Social attitudes towards sex are increasingly diverse. Consent. Consent has been an important factor in a Christian marriage. Christian teaching maintains marriage must be freely and willingly entered into, a priest asks both man and women separately if they are going into the marriage against their will. This has spread amongst society. A study published in 2013, reported that a number of people having sex under the age of 16 had not increased over the previous 25 years. Those against the proportion of people who disapproved of non-exclusive marriage, adultery, had increased amongst men and women. UK has more conservative attitude to some tradition aspects of sexual ethics. Homosexuality. Western democracy has had great changes in legalization in terms of homosexuality. Sex between two men was a crime in the UK and homosexuality was a mental illness in which conversion therapy was given. 1957, Wolf and an report, homosexuality should be decriminalized, and Parliament passed the Sexual Offences Act 1967, but men had to be 21 and over to have sex but was lowered to 16 by 2001. First same-sex marriage in England was 29th of March 2014. Equality and human rights laws, protect people on the grounds of sexual orientation and this has also been extended to transsexual and transgender people. 1999 London, there was a bombing of a gay bar, shows not all accepted changes of the LGBTQ community. There is still stigma around homosexuality in the UK in sports such as football and around society.
Christianity and homosexuality. They see it as wrong for a number of reasons. They can't reproduce so no life is formed so it's going against natural law. Same-sex marriages have not been permitted in a lot of churches so they have taken place outside of marriage which is also a sin. Leviticus, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, that is detestable. It is punishable by death, Leviticus. Genesis, God destroys the city of Sodom, male same-sex acts were taking place, God's displeasure with homosexuality. Saint Paul. People gave themselves over to shameful lusts because of a depraved mind, men committed shameful acts with other men and men who have sex with other men will not inherit the kingdom of God. These texts have been used to condemn homosexuality and acting on desires is a sin but being homosexual isn't a sin in itself, it just has to be controlled and the sufferer should receive sympathy but there has been debates on whether the texts should be taken as how they were in the context of that time. Most of the examples in the Bible are between adulterous men and married men, not two single men who want to have a loving relationship. There were also examples of pederasty, men and a prepubescent boy, but there is no evidence of a lesbian relationship in the Bible, these might be seen as immoral as a child can't consent and it may be adultery. But you shouldn't take biblical teachings out of context and apply them to the modern day. Gareth Moore. Some Old Testament rules are ignored, and some are taken out of context. Moore argues Christians are happy to follow the law in Leviticus but ignore the passage that advocates beheading as a punishment. They also ignore the law in Leviticus that forbids wearing garments made of two kinds of material. We are ignoring the laws we don't like and picking laws we find convenient or relevant, and so scripture is being used inconsistently to reinforce prejudices. Peter Vardy. Paul's view on homosexual acts as impure contradicts the rejection of the Jewish view of impurity in the New Testament. Jesus tended to have more demanding standards than the Torah on morality and so it is difficult to find evidence that Jesus would have supported a liberal view of homosexuality. Anglican Church and Homosexuality. Church of England opposes same-sex marriage. Gay and lesbian clergy who are in same-sex relationships have to remain celibate, issues in human sexuality. But there were divisions, report of the House of Bishops, working party on the human sexuality. They are divided on homosexuality. Case studies. One couple who regularly attended church stopped but still remained Christian. One man was celibate and then abandoned his religion and involved in sexual acts. One Christian fell in love with a man and then joined his religion again. Divided on homosexuality. Practicing homosexuals and the blessing of same-sex unions call into question the authority of Holy Scripture, Kuala Lumpur's statement on the human sexuality. Jean Robinson. Elected Bishop of Episcopal Church in the USA Dash was the first priest in an openly gay relationship to be consecrated bishop in a major Christian denomination. Jeffrey John. First person in an openly gay relationship to be nominated as a Church of England bishop but he caused controversy so resigned. House of Bishops Group. Church of England remained divided on homosexuality on debates such as whether homosexual relationships can have ethical validity whether it's right to give a blessing to long-term same-sex relationships, whether practicing homosexuals are suitable for ordination. Bishops of the Church of England 2017 marriages between one man and one woman, but gay men and women can have places in church minister of Church of England. Can't have a same-sex marriage but can pay with the couple after a state ceremony. Clergy who are in same-sex relationships are expected to remain celibate. Catholic Church and Homosexuality. T. 
teachings on homosexuality are in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, there is no sin in being homosexual as it is a trial. Homosexuals should be treated with respect and compassion but should be chastised. Pope Francis. No grounds for considering recognizing homosexual unions to be the same as God's plan for marriage and family. Kate Saunders, Peter Stanford. Catholic cardinals about homosexuals in the past fueled intolerance, Acrigay estimates there is over 100 gay men murdered annually in Italy. If a person is gay and seeks God and has goodwill, who am I to judge? Dash Pope Francis. He also argued the church should apologize for the harm caused to gay people. Secular Thinking on Sexual Ethics John Stuart Mill, the Christianization of marriage laws came to be viewed as social restraints on freedom. He argued that individuals should be protected from unnecessary legal action and social attitudes, they should be free. The individual is sovereign, Mill. The nature and limits of the power which can be legitimately exercised by society over the individual is what he questioned. He wanted a free liberal society and was concerned that the power religion had to forbid certain behaviors. Mill wanted the spread of the pill to the poor, which was prohibited by churches. He wasn't opposed to marriage but wanted it to be fairer however believed the church wasn't trying hard enough for the rights of women, gender and people. Marriage should be equal, and the legal Christian conception of marriage placed constraints on women during his time, they had the status of slaves and divorce was for men to get rid of wives. Many countries regulate sexual relationships legally and the laws are out of Christianity's view on monogamous marriages as the ideal relationship. Now, open marriages and relationships are rare and polygamous marriages are illegal in the UK. Amartya Sen, Martha Nushbaum Society and state should only intervene in relationships that cause harm to others and humans need well-being that they think is suitable for them. Having sexual satisfaction. Having emotional attachments humans should be free if they aren't causing harm. Natural law applied to sexual ethics. Natural law sees right and wrong as fixed things. Aren't relative, don't change according to the situation. Acts should be judged on whether they meet their tolos. Through the use of reason. Aquinas primary precepts. Catholic views are linked closest to the NL, reproduction, order of society. Sex equals new life so homosexuality would be forbidden. Contraceptives equals no new life so would be wrong. Sex with contraception equals may feel good but that is an apparent good. Criticisms. Loving life should be more important than reproduction and some women can't produce babies. Burton M. Eliza. Sexual acts have multiple purposes and questions why every sexual act should be to fulfill every single purpose. Sexual organs, suited for reproduction and for the production of intense pleasure in oneself, if sexual organs are just for reproduction then marriage between elderly would be unnatural. Extramarital sex justified. Could be moral to resolve infertility. Abraham sired a child by his servant girl Hagar when his wife Sarah was believed to be infertile, so surrogate mothers could give a child. Surrogate sex may be extramarital sex but isn't against the natural law. The popular Catholic response to masturbation using natural law is that it is blunting God's purpose and is using the penis or vagina in a way that God did not intend. This position can be maintained by Catholics as that every sexual act should have the possibility of ending in pregnancy, NB the Church's position on contraception. However, 
Progressive Catholic theologians may point to the need for a structured society as a way of permitting masturbation and even contraception, as sex can be unitive as well as used merely for reproduction. The absolute nature of the secondary precepts drawn from the primary precept seeking reproduction, however, satisfies most Catholics that contraception and masturbation are evil. Situation ethics applied to sexual ethics. When considering issues surrounding sex, situation ethics does not bring the rigidness of a natural law or Kantian approach. It recognizes that, whilst rules can exist they are not deontological or immovable as love is the only norm, rule, and is good in itself. In other words whilst rules can be broken in certain circumstances to do the most loving thing, the will to do the most loving thing cannot be. In the case where a man is locked in jail and his wife comes to visit, Midnight Express, it would be considered by situation ethics absurd to forbid this man to masturbate and thus share a sexual experience with his wife simply because a rule would be broken. Clearly the most loving, positive thing to do is to allow masturbation and to break the rule forbidding it. This decision can be justified also by the pragmatic nature of the theory. When considering homosexuality, situation ethics also provides a satisfactory answer as, for example, although it may be held that heterosexual relationships should usually be encouraged because of the reproductive possibility, to deny homosexual couples the right to build relationships, get married and have sex is wrong as in a situation where a man is gay, the possibility of him having a reproductive relationship is not great nor is it desirable. Personalism, which tells us you need to put the people first, positivism, which means to do the most loving thing and the pragmatism of the facts, which are relative to the case, show us that love, not the rule, is absolute. Utilitarian approach. Greatest amount of pleasure for the greatest amount of people. This allows for sex for pleasure. Mill views sex as a lower pleasure and you should probably go and read a book as he looks as the quality of the pleasure. Sex is a lower pleasure, reading is a higher pleasure. Bentham believes that we should maximize pleasure and therefore this could allow for extramarital sex is more pleasure if created for more people involved. Homosexuality is okay however if it becomes a norm it won't be okay as then we would die out as the human race cannot continue without sex taking place. Kantian's approach. An action can only be performed if it can be universalized therefore homosexuality isn't accepted as it cannot be universalized as then we wouldn't be able to continue the human race. This is the same as if sex was just for pleasure as if it was universalized this way then everyone would use contraception and we wouldn't be able to continue the population. You cannot use someone to have sex for your own lust of pleasure as you are just using them as a means to an end marriage is the only time we should have sex, and this was it is okay to have sex for pleasure also sees it as moral for someone to be a prostitute as long as there is mutual consent. Thank you for watching. If you want this channel to upload more videos on A-level religious studies please like this video and subscribe this channel.